In this video, I am building myself an outdoor shower. It was five years ago now that I built my parents one, and if you're wondering, they still love it and use it on a regular basis. Let me tell you, there is nothing better than getting done with yard work and stepping right into a shower to cool off and get clean before going into the house. Of course, I live in the country where I can't see my neighbors, but even so, I designed the shower so there is still full privacy. There are shelves for biodegradable shampoo and soap, hooks for towels, and even a small bench for taking off your shoes. Let me show you how I built it. Okay, so picking up the location on this piece of property, I'm gonna go with this location because there's a vacuum on the other side of that wall, meaning that I'll have easy access to water, but you can also look for things like a water spigot or even consider rainwater collection for feeding this thing. I started off by laying pavers on the four corners of what will be the footprint. If you have grass, you wanna remove it and get down to a more solid base, such as compacted dirt. If you have soft ground, you can also lay down a base of gravel. Each paver needs to be leveled in both directions individually. Then each one needs to be leveled to each other. You can use a long level to span from one to the other and make sure they're also in line with each other. It's 100 degrees already in Texas, so one of my employees, David, is giving me a hand to move this project along. Once all the pavers are leveled and squared to each other, next I move to cutting the material that will make up the small deck. I'm using pressure treated material here since it will definitely be getting wet and I use my Triton circular saw to cut the boards to length. By the way, if you'd like a set of plans for this build, you can check out my website. Next I started marking out the location of the joists. And a tip to speed this up is to set two boards on top of each other and use the crescent speed square that has a, an additional six inch extending arm. This will allow you to mark both boards at the same time. You can place an X on the side that the joist needs to be placed. Now I was able to quickly toss in the joist and use a nailer to attach them in their needed locations. If you don't have a nail gun, then you can also use screws and a drill. It's a little bit more time consuming, but works just as well. Perfect, that is the deck framed up. Go ahead and check for square by running a tape from corner to corner and bump the long side until the numbers match. Next, I went through and added joist hangers. These are metal brackets that will help support the joist so they're not just relying on sheer strength of nails or screws. A palm nailer drastically speeds up installing these, but again, if you don't have one, then a good old hammer and nails works just as well. Next step is to attach the posts. What I personally like to do is move them in and start off by using a nail gun to tack them in place. If you're working with other people, you just wanna put the word out that they're not secured. You don't want somebody leaning on them and falling over. However, it's a great way to get them roughly in place so that next you can use a level to plumb it up without having to hold the post up at the same time. At this point, I'm using a level to get the post plumb, then using screws to attach the post more securely. Once all of the bases are secure, next is to lock in the top of the post to each other. I did this by way of a top cap. You can measure the distance between the posts at the very bottom, since that is now a fixed dimension. Then move to the top and match it. Once the measurement is the same, lock it in place by screwing down the top cap to the post. And this is what you're gonna be left with. So far, so good. So for my project, I wanted a color scheme of dark painted posts with cedar panels in between. To achieve that, I paused building and started prepping to paint what I built up to this point. I plan on using a spray gun, so I first taped off the side of the house to protect it from overspray. For this task, I'm using the 3M hand masker, which quickly dispenses advanced masking film. You can load in whatever tape is needed for the surface type you're taping off. But since I'm going on stone, I'm using Scotch's rough surface painter's tape. The cool thing about the advanced masking film is once you apply the tape, you just have to unfold the plastic drop cloth. And they make the cloth in different sizes, and you can see I accidentally grabbed the 48 inch instead of the longer one. Oops, it's no big deal though. I just added a second layer to get the bottom of the house completely covered. Something I really love about this is the plastic has a static cling feature, which makes it hug to whatever surface you apply it to. Okay, next I loaded up my gun and started spraying. It's been a while since I used a sprayer on a project, and I always forget just how quick it makes the process go. I gave everything on the project a good coating. Even though it's treated in material, a coat of paint will give it added protection. And if you're looking for a sprayer, I do recommend this one by Wagner, which is the Flexio 3000. 
It comes with two size pots and has a quick connect and disconnect feature that makes getting started or finishing easy. One great feature is it can spray unthinned acrylic paint. So all I had to do is pour my paint directly into the pot and start. The gun has a fan control, an air control, and also a directional control. I love how easy it was to go from spraying horizontal to vertical. It's really handy on this project as I could place the fan horizontal to spray the post, then simply by turning the nozzle 90 degrees, switch it to vertical when getting to the top caps or even those rim joists. After making sure I didn't miss any spots, I let that dry and kept myself busy by cutting all of the boards for the decking. I had Trex composite decking left over from my outdoor kitchen build, so I brought that over to use here. The boards were 12 footers, so I started by cutting them in half and making a pile by the shower. If you're working in the sun, then check out the Crescent Night Eye tape measure as it has an anti-glare coating on it. Before laying down the decking, I unloaded a few bags of gravel in between the joists. This will prevent erosion and also kill a lot of that muddy splash up. But next I was able to start attaching the deck boards. Oh, here's a quick tip for scribing around the post. So just a trick whenever you wanna scribe a board around a post such as this situation, I give my spacer here in the correct orientation, butt this all the way up against the post. I'm gonna come here, instead of making a tick mark, I want my spacer, then that's gonna dictate where that tick mark is. Now you can grab a tape in order to get this distance. Measure here, this is five and an eighth, and now you can come five and an eight here, make your tick mark, and then now you just need to make those two right angles, and that's where you cut. Right now, the ends of my boards are just running wild, meaning I left them long and will cut them in a straight line after I have them all attached. For attaching them, I'm using screws that are colored the same as my boards, and I just face screwed them. I've shown in other videos how to hide the fasteners though, so if you want to use one of those methods, I'll leave you links. Even though it's composite material, this stuff still expands and contracts, so if you use it, be sure to use a spacer in between the boards. Perfect. Now, a quick cut with the Triton track saw and things down here will be done. The next step is to add panels and give this thing some privacy. I wanted to go with a horizontal slatted look, so I started by cutting and attaching a rail to give me something to attach said slats to. These are placed on the center of each post with screws. And just a tip, if you put them to all together on a workbench before getting started, you can pre-drill them at the same time and even get the screw started. This way you can hold up the board in place and attach it quickly and easily. Once the rails are in place, next is to start throwing boards at it. I'm personally using cedar fence pickets for my slats as they're pretty cheap board, but the cedar will hold up really nicely outside. I'm going with the board on board look where the front layer is staggered to the back to create 100% privacy. If you do this, be sure to overlap the stagger to accommodate the board shrinking over time. You can also make a simple jig to speed up the install process. This jig is made up of a long handle that connects two long perpendicular pieces these will push the slat up against the post. Then two shorter pieces that are cut to the length of the gap I wanted in between each slat, which in my case is four inches. This way I can hold the jig with one hand while placing the slat with the other. I just need to make sure the jig is pressed up against the top slat and the slat I'm placing is pressed up against the jig. I'm using a brad nailer with galvanized nails to pin everything in place. And this allows me to attach things quickly, then I can come back after to quickly run in screws. There. And before you know it, it starts looking like an adorable outdoor shower. Now, while cedar does have outstanding outdoor qualities, I did want to give it a coat of protection to keep its coloring and also give it longer life. I'm going to be spraying on my finish, so I first needed to tape off the painted portion of my build. To do this, I'm using Scotch's sharp line tape. I wanted to use the tape that would stick to my painted surface without pulling up any paint when I went to remove it. This tape is UV resistant, but has their edge lock technology that seals out paint to deliver those sharp desired lines. I taped off the line on the post that butts up to the pickets to get a nice sharp line here, but then use some foam to block off the rest. For the decking, I once again used the hand masker to lay down plastic. 
I placed it on the outside edge of the decking, so once I unfolded the plastic, it would be covering the bulk of the deck. The static cling feature of the advanced masking film helps to keep the film in place on top of the decking. Once it was all taped off, I sprayed the outside and the inside of the pickets. The finish I'm going with is a water-based varnish by Total Boat called Halcyon. And I chose an amber tint, but it does come in clear. It's UV stable and sprays extremely easy. It does require three to four coats, but it dries so quickly, it's easy to do up to five coats in a single day. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I am loving this color combo. Okay, now let's finish it off with some details. First, shells are needed for bathing products. By the way, I do recommend getting something biodegradable. These shelves are easy enough to install. Next is hooks for hanging towels and clothes, which are even easier to install. Then last is a simple bench so one can have a seat while taking off shoes or waiting on the water to warm. Perfect. Stay tuned for the next video where I cover all of the plumbing. I built my parent shower using a hose bib, but on this one, I'm gonna be running it from the house's plumbing, which will give me heated water as well as cold. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think about this build. Also, if you're curious about anything I used in the video, I've left you links down in the description. I will see you on part two. If you're interested in building a garden, don't forget that I have a set of plans showing you how to build a raised garden with an enclosed fence around it. The plans show you how to build one box so that you can build one or 10 like I did. You can click here for plans and here to subscribe to the channel.